With the four cuts of the vampire characters now covered for beginners guides for Ultimate Alliance 3, it's time to move back to the base roster. So for today's video, we will be checking out Crystal now. After that, we'll have a beginner's guide on Electra. We'll then cover Spider Gwen. And then following on from that, it'll be Daredevil and Black Widow. The order of Daredevil and Black Widow, I'm not too sure about. So let me know in the comments below which one you would like to see first. But as mentioned, for this beginner's guide, it will be Crystal. A really interesting character we will be checking out. So let's start off and do a quick overview. And during this overview, we'll look at our stats and we'll check out her abilities as well. In regards to how Crystal's kit is set up, I would say she's probably one of the most interesting characters in the game. She's certainly not one of the strongest, but without a doubt, she is one of the most interesting. Now, the reason for that is her use of elements and how they can actually affect her, her light and her heavy attacks. So if we look at the abilities she's got in the elements, she has a fire element and she's also got an ice element. Sadly, she is lacking the shock one, which is the best element, but she's also got the energy tag, which runs consistent through all her skills. So when it comes to building her, it's nice and easy to push up the damage numbers. But the abilities here then, if you actually charge up any of these abilities, even the ones that don't have elements, what happens is our light and heavy attack will change. So if you use a fire, you'll then get a fire, light and heavy attack, so you can burn the enemies. If you hold down Hydro Blast, then it'll change to ice and you can freeze enemies. For Cyclone, there's no special effect there, unfortunately. You don't have shock attached to that. And the same goes for Groundbreaker. Now, because they don't have elements, they actually do more base damage. The one that's the highest base damage on the light and heavy attack would be Cyclone. When you change your, your basics over to that, it would then be Groundbreaker. And then next up, you've got Hydro Blast and Fire Burst. So it's a choice of do you want to actually crowd control enemies or do you want to actually just take them down with pure damage. So I love the flexibility there. Her hero trait is Flight, which is a simple enough one, good for getting through levels nice and quick. Stats are a bit of a mixed bag. Her strength is D, but that doesn't affect her at all. Vitality is an F, so she can be really squishy. Mastery is a C, Resilience is a D, Durability is an F, and then finally Energy is an A. So you need to make sure she stays at range, otherwise she can be in a lot of trouble. But that's the overview. Let's have a more in-depth look at her abilities now. The first ability we have here is Fire Burst. This is generally used when you want to take out low level trash if you're swarmed by them and you have to be careful in regards to trash due to our low vitality and also the low durability as well. So if you've got a ton of enemies around you, it's nice to use this and as mentioned earlier on, if you actually hold down this button, you will of course charge it up, you'll do more damage and you can see we've added the fire elements to our hands, which means our, our light and heavy attack will both be affected by that. So it doesn't do much damage, doesn't do much stagger, but it is nice for taking out low level trash. The next ability we have here is Hydro Blast. So this is your ice element and again if you hold it down to charge it you add ice to attacks then you can actually freeze enemies. With this you're rooted while you're casting it so it's one I would say you need to be careful and when you're using it generally I'll use it on elites or bosses which are actually staggered because there's no chance of taking damage from them and also the damage rating on it is actually pretty decent as well. So that's Hydro Blast. Let's check out the next ability. This next ability we have is probably one of our most important ones and if you've played Storm or Star Lord then you'll probably know how this is going to work due to the fact she has elements in her kit. So you'll cast Cyclone, now if you follow up with Fire Burst or Hydro Blast you can create a Fire Tornado or you can create an Ice Tornado which does a huge amount of damage but it's also synergy damage so it's great for trials or gauntlets. We need to do a set amount of damage to actually take an enemy down or, or to pass the particular stage. If you use Groundbreaker, which doesn't actually have an element, it consumes a tornado, but it'll do a large amount of burst damage. So you've got the two options here. Do you want burst damage or do you want more sustained synergy damage? So the flexibility this skill provides really is pretty awesome. The final ability we have here then is one that doesn't have an element, but it's still a pretty nice one to use. This is called Groundbreaker, so the damage rating is up at A. When you are casting it, if the target's not straight in front of you, then you need to actually aim it and you are rooted. So with this, I'll genuinely use it on elites or bosses if they're stunned or staggered because it can do a nice amount of damage and you need to make sure you're not surrounded by enemies when you cast it as well. Otherwise, there's a high chance you're actually 
going to get downed. Now, in regards to the abilities, something I should have mentioned and covered in the first two, when we actually look at Fire Burst and Hydro Blast, the ones that have got elements, they can add that element to your ally attacks as well, if they've got the elemental trait. So the likes of Wolverine can get Shock Claws or they can get the Fire Claws there. So that's another thing that adds a really interesting dynamic to our kit and their abilities. So that's all the abilities covered anyway. So let's now have a look at the team bonuses. Team bonus wise then, Crystal is part of five different teams, so it's Women of Marvel, Marvel Royalty, Ultimate Alliance 3, Avengers and Forces of Nature as well. Now we have three characters that actually cross over into three different teams, meaning you can get a nice team bonus from them. They would be Wasp, Storm and also Star-Lord as well. Saying that, we don't have three, we actually have four. We've got Scarlet Witch as well there that does cross over. So that's all your options for your team bonuses to push out the extra damage, but as always with the team bonus damage, I would say run a team you want and run a team that synergizes well as opposed to focusing on this too much. Synergy wise then, Crystal does exceptionally well and it's not only for the reason that she can self synergize which is great in the first instance but when we look at the total number of synergy attacks that are available on her it's close to 400 which at the moment makes her the, the second place character in regards to the number of synergy attacks that are available, number one spot goes to Star Lord so you can see the synergy trait she's got it's burn freeze whirlwind and launch and there's a ton of different synergy tracks that can proc from that the top five characters in regards to how she synergizes with them you've got Wolverine Luke Cage Hulk Iron Fist and Miss Marvel the bottom five and ones I'd normally say you want to avoid but the fact you can self synergize if you need to put out self synergy damage then you can do it and you can still run these characters but the bottom five are Doctor Strange, Spider-Man, Deadpool, Thanos and then Scarlet Witch once again at the bottom of the list there. So that's all the synergies, let's look at the build options that are available. Build wise then for Crystal, I like to use her as a support crowd control character, so the support aspect comes from the fact that she can cast her element onto heroes with the elemental trait, she's got all the self synergies going on, she can help proc synergies in other characters, and then when it comes to the crowd control part of her kit, this is actually factored in as well, but if we look at the damage portion first, what you would want to do to push out some damage on her is increase the damage of energy attacks by 19.2, that will affect all our attacks and abilities. You then have increased the crit chance of energy attacks by 11.1 .1 because she doesn't have a lot of stagger going on in her kit and also she's lacking shock so you won't be locking down enemies as often to get the auto crits. You've then got increased damage done to enemies by 16.5, increased crit chance by 8%, you use them until you get the energy ones of course then you would use the energy ones instead. Finally, in regards to the crowd control I've talked about, if you're going to be running ice on her now, the reason I say ice over fire is fire's really easy to actually apply anyway, you don't need any assistance with it, but ice can be a bit harder to apply, so if you want to be freezing enemies, then you want to place one or two of the decreased number of attacks to inflict status effect by 34% on her. So there's quite a lot of options in regards to how you build her, but this is the one that I really found and did enjoy. So let's now have a look at her alternative costume. In the moment then for Crystal, it's just the one alternative costume we have, so that is just a simple recolouring and to be honest it's actually hard to really tell because it's roughly the same colours but just where those colours are placed moves around a little bit there. I think there is a slight difference in regards to the colour of her hair as well but it's not massively noticeable. In regards to unlocking it, you just want to play through the superior difficulty and you'll get this. Couldn't actually find another costume for Crystal that I would like for her to have, so if you've got any suggestions feel free to leave a link in the comments below. But that's the costume, let's now just finish up with a quick summary. So the best summary I can actually provide for Crystal is one that I actually talked about already in the initial overview section of the video one that she's not the most effective character. If you want to take down bosses and so on and you're playing purely as Crystal it can take a bit of time 
but despite all that, she's still a really interesting character and I really do appreciate what they've done with her kit in regards to the, the cell synergies, the different elements and definitely the change in the basic attacks which is awesome and until I actually read it in a comment to one of my videos it was something I wasn't actually aware of myself but I really do love the flexibility that it does provide there. So she's a character I would say she's definitely worth checking out but she is more of a support control character you just need to bear that in mind going on you're not going to be able to do a huge amount of damage but you're going to be able to to help out your team in various ways so she's quite a good character actually when i think about it if you're playing a, a co-op session she could work really nice there but that is crystal next up will be electra so keep an eye out for that in the next couple of days there's around about 30 beginners guides now complete so there should be a link up top right of the screen now hopefully actually link into that playlist if you want to check any out so Hope the video's been helpful, as always. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all again soon.